I'm Jamie O'Kane, CPA, Small Business Advanced Tax Planning and Compliance Extraordinaire. And this is the Abundant Beans Podcast, the podcast that takes my love for learning what makes people tick while digging into the good, bad, and ugly of small business ownership. We strive to give you the insight that only those in the trenches of being and working with entrepreneurs can provide. Islin is the VP of Sales and Marketing for Thea Marketing. And that was that you guys just started in 2018. Um, they do marketing um, for MSPs, right? I want you guys to talk about MSPs, that. MSPs, IT technical. IT technical. I don't. I didn't know what MSPs meant. Um, they have a whole list of people like VCIOs, and I was like, I don't know what that means. So you're gonna have to explain some of that for us. Um, and it allows you to be creative, um, just like with um, engineering. So Thea Marketing is a HubSpot partner and part of the Duct Tape Marketing Network. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So first question is always the same. What was your first job? My very first job was an admin assistant at the Colorado Department of Public Health and Environment. <laughs> really? Is that how you got into engineering? No. No. So your background is in um, petroleum engineering, right? Yes. So tell us about a little bit about that career because I think it's very interesting. So I was a petroleum engineer for about eight or nine years, and we got to travel to many different places. I lived in Texas for about six years, Mm -hmm. lived in Alaska for three years. That's really cool. Uh, Worked on multi-billion dollar projects, Mm -hmm. and that was really exciting. So you did reservoir management. What does that mean? Reservoir management means we see how fast we can deplete the reservoir Mm -hmm. to get a certain rate of return on, on the investment. Oh, that's really cool. So you were, so you were, so you're managing um, how fast the you oil. guys could get the oil out to to get the investment return for the investment return. So like somebody gives, so the they're like, we have this much this much dollars to put into this reservoir, and we want to make ten percent on that or whatever. So that yeah. was something you had to track as a manager of the reservoir. That's really interesting. So you had all these metrics you had to hit. Yeah, that's really cool. That's- so you had a podcast for petroleum engineers. Why did you start a podcast? Uh, that was... It was many years ago, too. That was many years ago, and we had four or five episodes, and then I I closed it down. <laughs> <laughs> Podcasting is hard. Yeah, It's podcasting. hard to get starting. It's hard to get started. Well, it's not only hard to get started. It's hard to continue. Because mm-hmm. like... I had, like, some, some mental health issues, mm-hmm. and, then it, and then, like, I the energy fizzled out, and then I... <laughs> I had to take a step back from it. So it was a podcast for petroleum engineers? Yeah, it was a podcast for petroleum engineers, by petroleum engineers. I had geologists on the podcast and a few other. That is a really books. niche market, probably. Yes. <laughs> you should start that back up. But Steven over here is going, oh, petroleum engineer podcast. <laughs> <laughs> he likes this idea. Um, so tell us about your nonprofit, um, Creating Potential. So that was also another project I started up. Uh, mm-hmm. We we didn't have too many events. Uh, mm-hmm. It was the the mission behind that was to get more uh, STEAM mm-hmm. professionals into the classroom. Mm-hmm. And when I have more energy and when I ha- have like more time, mm-hmm. I'll probably start that back up again. But mm-hmm. for now, it's it's I'm just filing the IRS paperwork <laughs> every year and just kind of keeping it in the background. So the mission was to bring more STEAM professionals into the classroom, so to teach in middle schools and or just at Just what to ha- kind of have uh, professionals um, in in the classroom to expose kids to what they did. Oh, cool. So, and so how did you guys facilitate that? Uh, that was that was the goal. Mm-hmm. So we never went – we never, never went got there. there. <laughs> never got there, but we – I love it. So we have, um, so Colorado has some STEM, some STEM or STEAM schools. Um, so it's a huge rising thing. So that'd be really cool um, if you could start that back up and facilitate some more of that. So how did you get started in marketing? So at, in Alaska, uh, we decided that we wanted to come back to Colorado. Mm-hmm. Uh, we, we also had the unfortunate luck of losing our jobs in the same month, oh, <laughs> roughly. Um, and we decided to come back to Colorado because that's where our family was. And Lucas uh, started an engineering company mm-hmm. for a year, mm-hmm. didn't get any clients from that, and he realized he liked marketing more than the engineering. The marketing piece of yeah. the engineering. 
Yes, marketing and he liked marketing engineering better than engineering engineering. And that's really cool. And so so your so your role is VP of sales. Yes. So I I have the hard part of building out our sales pipeline. That's really cool. So um, one of your favorite things to do with your clients um, and through this business for you guys is to help them find find their ideal customer. What does that process look like? So to find so to find your ideal customer, uh, the, there's lots of ways to do that. Mm -hmm. But first, it's a thought exercise of like, well, I, my ideal customer profile. I need to have so many LinkedIn employees. Mm -hmm. I need to, they need to be making above a certain amount of money. Mm -hmm. They need to like different link. There's also diff different LinkedIn sales navigator parameters you could apply. Mm -hmm. Like they need to be, for example, in IT, mm -hmm. less than 200 employees. Mm -hmm. um, th th those are the people that we're going after. Mm -hmm. um, and then LinkedIn sales navigator pulls up a bunch of different people, and then you can go after different accounts mm -hmm. for account-based marketing. Mm -hmm. So how do you help people determine who they should go after, though? How, what is like the first step of figuring that out? I mean, we can, well, well, we can all be like, oh, I wanted to do, you know, this niche, but how do we know if it's a good fit for us? The scary part is that when you're first starting out, you don't know. <laughs> so you, you go into Facebook groups mm -hmm. and do some research if that's like your, your right group of people you're going after. Mm -hmm. Or you can do research on LinkedIn. Um, you can do research on a lot of different platforms. Okay. Yeah. But you can, for us, we, we we do a lot of research on on LinkedIn to see because you can see in some some companies like some people's roles like they started out as VP of sales and then they did VP of business development and then they did they went to VP of marketing mm -hmm. and you can kind of see how the company evolved from more of an outbound sales generation into believing more of the inbound like through blogging, social media, oh. inbound sales techniques. So the outbound sales techniques are the the traditional ones of cold calling, mm -hmm. and rolling them in email sequences and that that type of thing. And then, um, but now we're, we're going more inbound because consumers and clients, potential clients are doing more research online before they contact you. Mm -hmm. So roughly 70% of, of potential customers who are coming in saying they want to talk to a salesman have already done all their research on your company. They already know the answers. They are. Yeah. They already, they already, they already know they already want to work with you. Yeah. They already know they want to work with you from all that inbound research. That's really interesting. So how do you create an inbound funnel? So it's, it's not necessarily a funnel, mm -hmm. but you, you just need to stay consistently blogging, consistent on social media. Uh, sometimes you just have to ask, on social media that mm -hmm. you're looking for business mm -hmm. and sometimes people will come out out of the woodwork that's so really cool so that's that's kind of how we've we've done it awesome so why is finding an ideal customer profile important so a lot of companies like six figure seven figure companies that we've talked to they don't have an ideal client mm -hmm. and you're and i'm like how do you grow so big without an ideal client like you need to Mm -hmm. know who you're going after mm -hmm. when you're doing this LinkedIn research, when you're doing Facebook research. Mm -hmm. So you're serving up Facebook ads to the right people mm -hmm. or Google ads to the right people. Mm -hmm. You can't be just like gunshotting mm -hmm. all small, medium sized businesses out there. So they're just, so those businesses are, uh, tell me if I'm wrong with the six or seven figures are just taking whoever it's quantity over quality. Is yeah. Correct. Yeah, they're just taking whoever walks in the door or, or a lot of their business is based on referral marketing. Mm -hmm. um, so I think 82% of all B2B sales is based on referral marketing, which is great. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, you need to have the inbound marketing, some mm -hmm. outbound marketing too, if you want to grow your business. It has to be the right referrals. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a lot of us run into the wrong referrals. Right? Yes. I, all the time. People are like, hey, this person needs a tax return. I'm like... <laughs> can't help that's them. their only qualifier <laughs> like yeah you're that's like, great <laughs> yeah whoops <laughs> if that's all you need you should go elsewhere 
right. yeah, we, you, you've niched down. To- yes, we have. So we've just niched down um, pretty severely, um, and it's I'm super excited about it. So uh, it took forever for me to find my ideal customer profile, um, and I've talked about this a couple times, but the big thing is is that I wanted to work with people um, – an industry where the personality type was a good fit for us. Yes, that's what um, we've discovered. And that too. was the hardest thing for me because I'm super type A. So it had to be the right demographics that we can save money on on tax on tax planning. So they have to be making enough money and have um, enough of an industry presence mm-hmm. um, to be making enough money so we can do that. But also, I have to like them, and they you have, have to, like to like and us. they have to do what we ask them to do, right? So it's really hard with some like professionals to get them to do what we've asked them to do. So like lawyers are kind of hard to work with. Like there's just certain industries that are harder to work with than others when you're trying to be their expert. Yeah. Um, and I am an expert, and I want them to do what I ask them to do so that we can stay in compliance. Yes. So that was what was hugely hard. That was what was so hard for me is that I could take, you know, 100,000 chiropractors, but that's not, you know, that might not be a good fit for us Yeah. as a, as a company and for us to save money and help them in the right way and keep them in compliance and all the things. So how do you deal with your clients on those type of, you know, personality match stuff? I think we're still learning yeah. that. I mean, the reason why we niched down to IT and managed service providers initially mm-hmm. is because my husband is a huge tech geek and he mm-hmm. loves mm-hmm. Uh, fixing computers. He built his own mm-hmm. BMF computer when he was starting the engineering company yeah. so it could run. I'm also married to one of those. Yes. <laughs> it could run like, you know, these huge engineering calculations and mm-hmm. everything. So. That's why we niched down to MSPs initially, but now I think we're we're gonna open the door to like just technical professions, so like engineers, IT, software, mm-hmm. because we can understand technical subjects like biology, mm-hmm. software, you know those those type of industries very quickly. Because you both have the background. Because we both have the background, we we both have the technical know how. Because you're when you're going through school in petroleum engineering, you're not just learning petroleum engineering. You also know elements of chemistry, biology, right. physics, all. Right. We need that. Um, I was a chemistry, uh, chem- chemical engineering major for one year. <laughs> oh my gosh! You're almost one of us. <laughs> no, not even maybe. <laughs> maybe. I looked around and was like, nope. <laughs> it's like there's too many dudes in here. Yeah, <laughs> can I go back to? Can I go with the business school? <laughs> um. So, how does an ideal customer profile help a business grow? Is once once you know your ideal customer profile or your I- ideal buyer uh, persona, mm-hmm. there's lots of different terms for yes. it. Hedgehog. Some people call it hedgehog. Yes. <laughs> like what you 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 know what, who to go after mm-hmm. because like with a salesperson's time, like you can't you know work smarter or work more efficiently or w- somehow work more productively. Mm-hmm. The only way you can work better is to limit your time so that you're talking to the people only to the people who are interested in your services mm-hmm. um, and who, who are in your niche. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, so that's the only way sales can, you can grow your sales year over year is so that you, you know who you're talking to. If you take anyone off the street, that will, that'll grow your, per, your uh, business to a certain extent, mm-hmm. but then you don't know who, who you stand for. Mm-hmm. And you don't know who you can help the best. And you don't know who you can help the best. So you're always learning a new industry every time someone walks in t- in, into the door. Yeah. And that's how we scale processes too, right? So if we have like one or two industries that we work with, you know, pretty much exclusively, then you can scale your processes and technology to those people. Yes. And that's, you know, something as an accounting, like in accounting, we deal with a lot of tech. Like there's so many tech options, you know, yes. for books and all the things we a lot of stuff is marketed to us and a lot of the time I'm just like I don't know what the people need right so yeah. how do we how do we scale our processes you know for a higher bottom line um which is you know something I have to all think about but once we have a niche then we can make our processes more streamlined I think too yeah you can scale faster <laughs> yeah scale faster so how does the ideal customer pro- profile tie into an overall our business's overall online presence? So you you know who you're writing your content for, mm-hmm. basically. You know who who you're doing your social media for, your blogs, your, you have a podcast or your mm-hmm. webinars mm-hmm. for. You know who who you're talking to, mm-hmm. and so you're you know you're not talking to like 
all lawn mowing businesses, mm -hmm. you know you're talking to technical businesses, for example, or you know you're talking to like software as a service businesses, mm -hmm. you know. So once you've, mm -hmm. you've niched down that ideal buyer persona or that ideal customer profile, you know, you know who you're talking to. Mm -hmm. And how do you find their pain points? So you said, you know, looking at um, going yeah. into Facebook groups or things like that. There's some industries that will not let you in their, pro in their Facebook groups, I found. Yes. yes. So the easy way is to do Facebook groups. Mm -hmm. The harder way, but the, e but the, in the long run, easier way mm -hmm. to do that market research is to go on market research calls. Mm -hmm. So cold calling these people. Mm. And, and, you know, out of like 10 or 20 calls, you might talk to one person. So you're just really leaving voicemails mostly for people, which makes it less scary. Um, and, <laughs> I do and, also not like to call, call to call people out of the blue. So <laughs> yeah, it, it feels like you're invading their privacy or something. Yeah. But at the same time, you're just really just leaving a message. And for the the one or two people you talk to, mm -hmm. you get to learn so much about what their pain points are oh, during during that call. So it's like cold calling is not the end of the world. It's not it's not dirty. It's not salesy. Uh -huh. Just just do some market research calls and then you'll you'll understand the pain points of your industry much better and mm -hmm. you'll learn whether or not you can serve that industry mm -hmm. or if if it's uh, a bad fit. <laughs> we had, um, I have a friend who, he said he used to always do push-ups before his cold calls in the morning. That was like, that was the frog he would eat every morning is to make all those cold calls. And yeah. so he was like, I'd have to do push-ups and do my, um, my visualizations yeah. and I'd have to do all of my, um, uh, what is it? like my positive statements about myself <laughs> yes like, i like, believe the positive statements yeah and then and then he's like and then i could do them and i was like i don't even know if i could get that far <laughs> introverts us introverts have a hard time with cold calling i don't know if i'm if an intro if i'm an introvert or an extrovert but uh -huh. like you just you just do it you just kind of do it mm -hmm. it's we'll, just like that first video yeah exactly. you make exactly you just you just start on a cadence <laughs> um was it i think jerry seinfeld was like had this like keep like every day he wrote a joke he put an x in the calendar and then he he would keep on making x's and then he'd keep on writing every day so mm -hmm. then he he would not break the chain mm -hmm. so that's the that's the thing with cold calling i love that i love it's like don't break the chain or keep on or if you're not calling cold calling keep on sending out sales emails mm -hmm. sales email sequences um so just just keep on doing what you're doing and eventually you'll know their pain points you'll know Mm -hmm. what to write in the email sequences, it'll all become really clear. I love that. So how do you guys leverage technology to help your customers um, with their marketing efforts? Oh, man. I wish Lucas was there to answer the question. That's no. fine. Um, so so we're a HubSpot partner. Mm -hmm. um, so what, what we do is we leverage HubSpot. So in, in, for example, in delivering email sequences, which is like f a sequence of five emails that we deliver over the course of two weeks to a month mm -hmm. to our prospective customers, um, we use HubSpot uh, automation to oh, do that. Okay. We host our, our uh, website on HubSpot, mm -hmm. we host our blog on HubSpot, we do everything on HubSpot, okay. landing pages. Um, oh, that's awesome. That So it's an all-in-one system. So you're not trying to track, you know, Okay, from this Facebook ad, mm -hmm. I had so many clicks to this lead pages mm -hmm. landing page, and from there, how many conversions did I did mm -hmm. I get? And it becomes really convoluted. Whereas if you put it in one system like HubSpot, mm -hmm. it just you you can track your you know your Facebook audiences, your Google audiences all the way from you know when they made that first click to the email conversion to signing into your email list. You start sending them emails. You can see what they clicked on. Because a contact record is created for them in the CRM. Mm -hmm. You can even see, like, if they visited your website, what pages they viewed. Mm -hmm. So it just really streamlines that whole marketing process. Yeah. And this is what you guys build for your clients, too. Yes. Yep. That's, what That's really interesting. All right. Well, before I ask my last question, um, what is the easiest way for people to find you guys? Uh, my LinkedIn profile or FIA Marketing, T-H-E-I-A Marketing. Com. Awesome. We will link everything down in the description box. All right. Last question for you. Um, what is the one thing every business should be doing to focus their marketing? To focus their marketing. Mm -hmm. it's, it's kind of a two-way street. You mm -hmm. should be 
looking, you should not be afraid of the outbound methods, which is cold calling mm -hmm. and doing sales email sequences, but there's also the inbound marketing, which is the blogging, social media posts, mm -hmm. that type of thing that you should also be creating, be creating. And do, so do both inbound and outbound. Yeah, you can't do just both. pick one. Yeah, do both inbound and outbound. That's oh. awesome. Thank you for explaining that to me because I was, that's something I didn't know about, the inbound versus outbound. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Thanks. Thank you so much for listening or watching. Please be sure to subscribe on YouTube, iTunes, or wherever you prefer to listen. If you learned something and found some useful information to apply to your business, please consider giving us a thumbs up and drop us a review. Until next week, be abundant.